okay, it's seven grains of salt. They will hide in the mountains and the caves. Well, they have lived like this in luxury, as we've all known, but lately, I'm sure some of you have seen this, but maybe some of you haven't. They've been investing in underground housing. Lots of them. They might look like this, where it's partially underground, or in bunkers. But don't think that they're not still pristine and luxury uh, the way that they're used to. Because this is what it would look like in their underground bunkers. Bill Gates and America's millionaires are building underground survival bunkers. Here's another one. How scared could I be a contagious disease will wipe out humanity? Uh, here's another one. Billionaires are preparing for the apocalypse. Do they know something you don't know? Another one. Bill Gates fears plague that could wipe out humanity. Um, here's another one. Bill Gates thinks a coming disease could wipe out or could kill 30 million people within six months and says we should prepare for it as we do war. And these articles are everywhere, guys. I mean, I'm just not making this stuff up. But you know the one that I like the most is this one here that was uh, printed by News Punch. And I'm going to read it to you because he actually quotes me in this one. I like this. It says, Bill Gates builds nuclear bunker, tells staff to leave the country. Bill Gates urgently ordered the construction of a nuclear bunker at his Seattle property and has advised long-term employees to leave the United States before the following weekend, says a member of the staff. He didn't say how long we should be away, but he said we should definitely leave before the following weekend, said Mr. Hall, a pool technician who says he watched the construction of the nuclear bunker and explains it is large enough to com comfortably hold a handful of people only. It was previously occupied by an intercontinental ballistic missile designed to literally withstand a direct nuclear strike and still be able to launch the missile that was protected inside of it. Our clients are former NFL players, we've had authors, we've had uh, a few movie stars. Larry tells us this silo can support 70 people, but survival's gonna cost you. For a full floor, it's $3 million, half floor, $1.5 million. We actually have our own jail cell, which is nearing completion right here. You know, let's face it, it's possible for someone to have a bad day. We can you know, bring them in here and let them cool down. This is the pharmacy window. When it's operational, it's a uh, licensed uh, Kansas pharmacy. So we will have at least seven years worth of medication for anyone that's an owner in here that has prescriptions. Let's say these are far-fetched and they're hypotheticals that won't happen. I, you know, read the headlines. I think it's um, the value that you put on the safety aspect and the what-if scenario is an in incredibly tangible peace of mind to add to the dollar value of the investment. What is this? Rock wall, Lincoln. Oh, hey, look at this guy. If you have a dog, this is where you can take your dog to go to the bathroom. They even have a toilet for dogs right there. A NASA scientist that is in charge of the well-being of the astronauts came and helped them plan out what are the important things that you need if people are going to be living in here for a long stretch of time so that they don't go crazy. The camera just zooms in on it because it sees the motion. This is the security room. You have to make sure you scan all of the a wall full of thick, thick rubber. What type of doomsday bunker would it be if it didn't have a shooting range? This is a legit firing range with two different bays. Right now, we're in the movie theater room. It's near the very bottom. We're 190 feet underground right now. There's a killer sound system in here with a projector. Just off the movie room, we have the bar. These water fill where the store is and the general market. They have enough freeze-dried food and canned food. The occupants would be able to live off of this food for five years. Hey, can I get some fresh food? You need to get me some fresh fish. I'd like some tilapia and rainbow trout, please. This isn't even the stuff that they grow themselves. Woo! There's the uh, grow lights. And I'm more even more pink now. That's how they grow plants. This is one floor of two that where they can grow plants. Over here, this is the fish hatchery. Shh, this is the library. Facility. Everybody in here is required to have four hours a day of either work or school for kids. This is the, this is the kitchen. This is a super nice sub-zero refrigerator. And then there's both appliances, even for the microwave right here. So 
this is the residence, and now we're gonna go down the hallway and show you what this really looks like. This is one of the half residences. And in here is the bunk beds. You can have some kids in here, and you can change which view you want. Also has a TV in here, nice wood floors. I like that the, all of the walls are rounded because we really are in this almost like a silo type thing. And this would be, I guess, considered your master suite. Another window looking to the outside with a nice view. And then we've got your bathroom. You that already own a doomsday bunker, got one question for you. Does yours have a swimming pool? There's a swimming pool because why not? <laughs> if you're buying a bunker for one to three million dollars, you want to have a swimming pool. I bet the water feels great. This is the. Well, that's what they think they'll be doing soon, I imagine. But as we all know, you can run, but you can't hide, and you cannot hide from God. You can't. Oh, it reminds me of Revelation 6, and it says that um, they hid in the caves and among the rocks and the mountains, and they, they called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath and indignation of the lamb for the great day of the wrath and the vengeance and the retribution has come and who is able to stand that's right the final judgment everyone will have to stand before god alone but those in christ are forgiven Please. Mm -hmm. Some lying, some stealing, and some acts of kindness here and there. I've tried to live a good life. Well, let's see how good. This way. Next. File, please. Okay, I admit it. I did a lot of bad things. Yes, I see. But I've done good things, too, you know, to offset the bad things. Like, one time, I cheated on a test, but then I cleaned up trash in the park. Mm-hmm. That should balance out, right? Let's find out. This way. That should have balanced out, right? It should have balanced out. Next. Bio, please. Impressive. Oh, yeah. I devoted my entire life to make this world a better place. I dug wells in Africa. I donated blood every month. And I ran an orphanage in India. I mean, I just wish I could have done more. Mm-hmm. And is this your subscription? I only read the article. I only read the articles. Next. My mom goes to church. So it baptizes the baby? Take American Express, right? Next. File, please. Whoa. Somebody's been busy. Well, let's get this over with. Sorry, um, I didn't know he was with you. Okay, step on the scale. Not you. Him. Hey, wait a minute. That is totally not fair. Yeah. That's why it's called Grace. I 
I'm sure many of you have seen that, but I just thought I'd throw that in there just as a reminder that we do need Christ. He's our only hope and our salvation. Accept him today, because we are not promised tomorrow. We don't know when our time is up. God bless. Stay vigilant. Until next time.